Hey everyone, today we're diving into an interesting part of history, the native peoples of North America. These are the first people who called this continent home long before anyone else showed up. You might know them as Native Americans, Indigenous Americans, or First Nations, but they are the original inhabitants, believed to have made their way here between 40,000 and 14,000 years ago. These groups developed into different nations, each with its own unique and sophisticated culture, spread across what we now know as Alaska, Canada, and the United States. Now, we know about their early history thanks to archaeological discoveries like spearheads, tools, and even large structures that they've left behind. These finds have helped us categorize their early periods, ranging from the ancient Paleo-Indian period to the more recent Mississippian culture, which lasted until around the mid-1500s. Over time, some groups transitioned from being hunter-gatherers to living more settled, community-focused lives. Sites like Watson Break and Poverty Point show us how advanced some of these cultures were, and they continued to develop into distinct societies, each with their own worldview, beliefs, and traditions. These communities were tight-knit, with a strong sense of working together and respecting both their surroundings and each other. They believed in higher powers, spirits, and the importance of rituals and traditions, with warfare and even slavery being part of their world. One thing that stands out is the significant role women played in their societies, often serving as leaders or advisors. By the time the first Europeans, led by Leif Erikson, arrived in North America around the year 1000, these nations were already well established, each associated with a specific region. Fast forward to the 15th century when European colonization began, and despite the eventual loss of much of their land, these nations didn't just disappear. In fact, they still exist today, despite the myths that were later created about their so-called vanishing. These stereotypes, like the idea of the noble savage, were just European misunderstandings and oversimplifications. As for how they got here, it's believed that the first people crossed over from Asia to North America via a land bridge called Beringia, which connected modern-day Siberia and Alaska. They likely brought domesticated dogs along with them, and some may have also arrived by sea, settling along the west coast and moving further south. There were probably several waves of migration over the years, but no one is entirely sure why they made the journey. By the time of the last glacial maximum, around 26,000 years ago, they had already made it as far south as present-day New Mexico. When the glaciers melted and Beringia was submerged around 10,000 BCE, the land route closed off, although it's possible more people arrived by sea. While this is the widely accepted version of events, we should remember that it's based on theories. No one really knows for sure how or when these first inhabitants arrived. Each native nation has its own origin story, and those stories are just as important to consider. What we do know is that by the Archaic period, these peoples had spread out across North America, developing unique cultures and identities. Over time, these nations grew in number, with a population in the millions, and were spread across various regions with distinct languages and customs. And now let's talk about how these Native American nations evolved and became more complex over time. By around 1540 CE, these communities had grown into sophisticated societies, each with its own system of governance and cultural practices. As scholar Michael G. Johnson points out, even before Europeans arrived, the continent was already a dynamic place. Tribes were constantly moving, invading, and migrating, shaping and reshaping the land they lived on. They weren't just living in some untouched Garden of Eden like Europeans later imagined. Instead, they had rich, active cultures, and some had even developed impressive agricultural systems that were partly inspired by Mesoamerican farming techniques. Going way back to the Dalton Folsom period, we see evidence of spiritual beliefs, like the idea of an afterlife, and the importance of community over the individual. These people weren't just hunting and gathering, they had tools, weapons, and even a device called the atlatl, which was like an early version of a spear thrower. As time went on, agriculture became more important, 
especially when maize or corn was introduced from Mesoamerica. This was a game changer. Maize, along with beans and squash, known as the Three Sisters, became essential crops. These three worked together perfectly. The corn gave the beans something to climb, the beans helped fix nitrogen in the soil, and the squash kept the ground cool and free of weeds. Not only did these crops support healthier diets, but they also allowed more people to settle down in one place, leading to the growth of larger and more permanent communities. But even with farming becoming more widespread, many native nations didn't completely give up their hunter-gatherer ways. In fact, some groups, like those on the Great Plains, stuck with it for much longer. Meanwhile, others, especially in the southeastern woodlands, were building incredible monumental structures, things like Watson Break and Poverty Point, which were massive population centers. These places were more than just impressive architectural feats, they were hubs for trade, both local and long distance. Goods, ideas, and culture were shared across vast networks, connecting these nations in ways that we're still discovering today. When we talk about Native American societies, it's essential to understand just how deeply their spiritual beliefs influenced daily life. Many Native cultures believe that all things, from animals to plants to even inanimate objects, were alive and interconnected. It was a world of respect and gratitude, where everything was seen as a gift from the Creator or Great Spirit, and it was everyone's responsibility to give back through rituals and ceremonies. These earth renewal rituals were crucial for maintaining balance, especially around the changing seasons or important events like the first harvest. It was all about staying in tune with the rhythms of nature. But just because these nations had a deep respect for life didn't mean they were always peaceful. Wars happened, sometimes over resources, other times for power or to protect hunting grounds. Weapons like bows, arrows, spears, and tomahawks were commonly used in battle, and scalps were taken as trophies to boost personal prestige and status. However, these conflicts weren't just random skirmishes, they often involved formal battles, prisoner exchanges, and peace treaties between different nations. Interestingly, while there was a strong sense of community within each tribe, they didn't always extend that same respect to outsiders. Each nation believed in the importance of their own people and land, and unless there was an agreement between tribes, you were pretty much on your own if you crossed into someone else's territory. This focus on their own communities is part of the reason why Native Americans were initially interested in forming alliances with European settlers. The introduction of guns and horses offered a significant advantage over neighboring tribes. It's also important to mention that their concept of land ownership was very different from what the Europeans brought with them. For Native Americans, the earth and its resources didn't belong to any one person or group. The land was seen as a shared gift from the Great Spirit, and the idea of owning land like the Europeans did was foreign to them. They believed in giving back to the earth through rituals and offerings, maintaining the cycle of life in harmony with nature. Native American daily life varied depending on the region, but there were some commonalities. Women played a crucial role, often being the ones to build homes, raise children, and prepare food. They also had significant influence in governance. Men, on the other hand, were typically responsible for hunting, protecting the tribe, and tending to crops. Their homes reflected their environment, from teepees in the Great Plains to igloos in the Arctic and longhouses in the woodlands. Each was built with practicality and the needs of the community in mind. Music, storytelling, and rituals were at the heart of their culture. These weren't just for entertainment, they were essential for religious practices, healing, and even securing good harvests. Shamans or medicine people were the keepers of both spiritual and medicinal knowledge, using herbs and natural remedies long before modern medicine came into play. For example, they created early forms of aspirin from willow bark and developed techniques for anesthesia. In fact, Native Americans contributed many things we still use today, from tobacco and peanuts to inventions like the kayak, moccasins, and even the concept of lacrosse, their influence is vast. They were also early mathematicians and astronomers, 
developing systems for understanding the stars and seasons. They even had advanced urban planning and built road systems connecting their settlements. But when Europeans arrived, everything changed. Diseases like smallpox wiped out large portions of the population, and as European settlers expanded, native lands were taken, often violently. Despite all this, the Native American nations survived, and their descendants are still here today, fighting for justice, preserving their culture, and reminding everyone that the myth of the vanishing Indian is just that, a myth.